Human rights groups say the army killed more than 500 defenseless people. Officials are angry that Andijan continues to make the headlines. Where in Uzbekistan were the protests meant to have been, he says. What rubbish is this? In press and information agency, we didn't write anything about massacre. We didn't write any anything uh, about the murdering of simple people. We just accused the foreign countries. It was an uh, order of uh, president, of course. You must see how the government, which is very strong in Uzbekistan and uh, trying to, to uh, destroy all the traces of the crime. It was obvious that they want to turn everything upside down and accuse you. If you reported about the shooting, it means you are a falsificator or traitor or liar, not them who have been killing people. There are people saying no, that were terrorists, the government has some right to shoot them. And then you feeling you have to, to tell them that it's not true. You have to tell them what you saw. It was the moment in which the people were within a millimeter of standing up to the government and asking for accountability. And I think the government showed its true colors in acting as it did. In March 2006, Mutaba Tajibaeva was officially imprisoned on more than a dozen charges, including slander and extortion. But to all independent observers, the main motive must have been her outspoken criticism of the government over the massacre in Andijan. My assessment when I was there is that the outside image looks quite good, even when you're walking through the streets, everything looks well, people are going to markets, they're going to their jobs, to schools, you can work, you can meet people, you can watch TV in your hotel room, you can watch BBC and CNN, and everything is good. Um, but then, at the slightest moment, the government can turn all that off. At any moment, they can restrict websites, which they do, they restrict access to international websites. At any moment, there is no longer BBC and CNN in your hotel room. And at any moment, they can uh, take action against individuals who have spoken to foreign media or to our researchers. So although the outside veneer looks kind of OK, it's not at all that way. And I think that after Andijan, there's a clear break from that, and that maybe even the veneer is not there anymore. I do not see any improvements, as everything what the government has done since the Andijan mask, it just took to cheat the best on to give some examples. Uzbekistan. Today this notion cannot be perceived only as a place inhabited by a particular nation. Uzbekistan... My impression is that the situation has not basically changed. And that, in fact, the Andijan uh, killings massacre, uh, since then it, it might even have... Uh, the repression has increased. Karimov is a, such a president, he is a, such a dictator, uh, who wish to stay in the power. That's all. This is his uh, wish. This is his uh, essence of his activity. Sometimes you can feel even he just sincerely surprised and kind of even anger. Why you interfere in my garden? It's my deal, what I'm doing. I had access to uh, top secret documents. I had access to meet with the president. In that time, I have, 
I have heard, I have seen by my own eyes that president orders to fabricate uh, accusation to simple Muslim believers. At the present trend of globalization, Uzbekistan is striving to strengthen its friendly ties with almost all states of the world, and it's contributing to the stable operations of peace, not only in the region, but also in the whole world. War on terror helps Karim very much. This is the only fear what he explores for so many years and we, we, we had some explosions, very strange explosions in Uzbekistan which always happened before the elections and of course Karimov justifies it saying that you see we are on the attack of terrorists and those countries in the West who are also fighting terrorists they can't blame. <laughs> Myself also uh, fabricated a lot of cases. You drink uh, 200 grams of vodka or alcohol and you will be brave and you can fabricate everything. I have no strategy uh, to deal with, uh, with Uzbekistan, but um, certainly um, uh, we have to continue to, to, to speak to, to them, uh, to, uh, to to criticize also, uh, also from the awareness that we also have our our own uh, shortcomings and failures. But uh, um, the worst thing is, uh, I think, is, is just to ignore it and, and to keep silent. The government, if they manage to survive after the massacre and to silence the most critical voices um, in Uzbekistan, I feel like even those who are outside of Uzbekistan, they a little bit tired to work because we do not feel the country. Every day when you write, write, write something and you start really thinking that how long I will do this, if there is any sense to do it. Unsatisfaction comes, I think, to anyone who works. And after, I think, finally, some people can come to say, like, uh, I can't change anything. Let Karimov be. The blissful land of Mother Anahar is waiting for its investors. When I was in Geneva, I saw a protest in front of the United Nations headquarters. You know, when we organize such a protest in Uzbekistan, the government always uses intimidations against us to stop the protest. I hope that one day, in my country, people will be able to freely participate in demonstrations and freely express their opinions. There was a presidential amnesty last year. People like Mutabar Tajibayeva have been released, albeit conditionally. But earlier this year, June, July, we saw another two people being arrested, given 10-year prison terms, uh, again, strongly linked to their human rights activity. Other people have uh, this year felt that they had to flee the country to go into exile 